Today in what is hopefully a short video, uh, not short because I don't want to talk, but short because I had to unplug my fan and it's 29 degrees Celsius right now, which I believe is 195 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the Kemp Technologies. I was wondering, wondering what this like weird K was for and I noticed underneath it said Kemp Technologies. Loadmaster LM1500. My guess is it's just a load balancing device. Um, nope, plane's going by. Uh, got power light on the front, uh, three ethernet ports, I think they're all 100 base T, this is kind of an older model. This thing will, um, what you can do is you can set up uh, different uh, WAN ports, so you'd have like your two internet connections and maybe your um, company's network, and this will help balance all the data going through them so you don't saturate one connection and slow down other stuff, blah 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 blah. Uh, they're fairly common on eBay. Uh, they're usually fairly simple machines in that they're just, you're paying a ton of money for uh, a copy of Linux and a 1U server. So uh, in this particular one, it's a 1U rack. Uh, we've got a VGA port, serial port, some USB ports, two fans or 40 millimeter, uh, power switch, this is just a toggle. And we've got a 1U power supply, standard, it's got a nice clicky switch. I was hoping I could take this power supply out and put it into my, hang on, hang on, I can reach it, I know I can reach it, my super drive eraser thing, because the power supply in this is super loud, and it just uses a regular 1U power supply, but it turns out this one's super loud as well. Unfortunately, uh, it'll probably just end up in the trash because uh, uh, what good is a 1U power supply when you don't have a rack mount set up. Uh, I picked this thing up for 15 bucks with free shipping. I figured what the hell, I've always wanted to see I, inside these guys because I always notice them on eBay because they're so bright yellow. And I'm always just curious, like, is it all custom? Do they have proper motherboard in them? Like, what, what are they doing with these things? Okay, with the top off, we've got a 165 watt Emacs power supply. These are in every single thing I take apart, uh, it seems. we got your fans, a little front panel for the USB, some connectors, and a little via motherboard. Uh, I have powered this up. It goes into the BIOS, and it also goes to a startup sequence and then halfway through it restarts so I don't know if there's a problem with the disk module or the motherboard screwed up the caps look good and they're Sanyo caps I'll have to look up the, um, the actual series to see if maybe they're just as just a defective run uh, it actually has half a gig of SD 100 or 130 133 memory which is fairly big I think half Half gig sticks are pretty much where they maxed out. They may have made one gig sticks for servers, but uh, half gig's not bad on an older system. PCI slot, and you've, you know, there's space for a hard drive. Now, here's a trick. Uh, obviously, you can't do this on eBay, but uh, if you're if you're looking at like a you know you go to a uh, uh, reseller or whatever, if you give this a shake. If you hear, well see I've kind of moved this around, but generally if you hear something rattling around, like a wire, that's a good indicator that it doesn't have a drive or it's been removed. Because it'll either be something like this where it's an adapter to go to the disk module or it's just the loose power connector that should be plugged into the hard drive but isn't because there's no drive. And unfortunately, I, you know, many of the things I pick up like after I get them from eBay, I pick them up and give them a rattle and I can just hear like five of these rattling around and I know they're most likely all the hard drives are removed from them, which is always disappointing because that's usually the way you can make your money back on these or at least, you know, soften the blow somewhat. So I'm going to take this whole thing apart and uh, get all the parts out of this so we can take a better look. You know, it's really bad when you label stuff. That's not right. It doesn't matter. If this wire's straight or crossover, male or female, I don't, yeah, it just seems wrong labeling. We're all the same. Got the power supply out and the hard drive cover, it's just, our bracket, it's just a pretty tough piece of metal. And we've got a couple Sunon fans, they're loud, won't be keeping those. 
power connect or sorry power switch just runs over to the motherboard which we'll see and yeah not too interesting like I said this power supply is ridiculously loud so so much for using that guy this is just the USB header uh, for the front panel it gives you two USB ports out of this wire uh, the cool thing about these is you can disconnect or remove this uh, pin header and replace it so that you can uh, with a female so that you can plug it right onto a motherboard and you've got uh, access to regular USB ports inside your motherboard or inside your case if your motherboard doesn't have them like you know, most server boards do but uh, the nice thing about this is that you can put your you know PF sense or free NAS or whatever on a flash drive like I do on my server and you don't have to worry about having a stick sticking out of your case uh, yeah, so it's a neat little thing to do. This just connects with a, a wire that you could always reuse and just use for that. But yeah, easy little thing to do. Here's a little ITX motherboard. Well, it's not exactly an ITX motherboard because it's uh, not square. ITX boards are normally square. It uses this weird power connector, which is like an older Molex style connector, along with this secondary connector that plugs into here. And I think this sends the power on signal to the ATX power supply. So you can see it's got this funky adapter that plugs into a normal ATX power supply. Uh, I might hang on to that because sometimes I run into boards that use these weird things. These are just the headers for the VGA and the serial. They plug into the motherboard. As for the motherboard itself, it's just a VIA chipset and probably a little VIA CPU. Uh, I was wondering why my hands kept turning black. I think I found it. Ugh. Yeah, you get stuff like that. Like you notice, I was in a weird pattern. You get stuff like that when it's uh, due to the fans. The fans are blowing uh, dust in a certain pattern, and you'll get it all over uh, in a weird pattern. Usually, kind of repetitive. Fan looks not too bad. These are all Sanyo WX series capacitors. They're probably good. Uh, they make um, that series is pretty good from what I can tell and I may steal them for use on other boards that are dying that I don't really care about uh, one thing I notice is that like look they're not even they're not even level look at that that's terrible who the hell built this thing anyway uh, we've got a little big fan on this thing and let me see if I can Pop this guy off. Side cutters. Come on. Give me my side cutters. Yeah. There we go. Lift up. Snip. This is if you don't want these. Lift up. Snip. And on there. <laughs> it's on there. The fan isn't. Ugh, dirty. Hmm. This may need some more violent methods. Ugh. There we go. Yeah, see, this is actually a thermal epoxy, not thermal paste. See, it's actually, well, maybe it's not an epoxy because it is sticky. You can see it taking all the, uh, dust that was on my hands from the fan off but under here we've got let me grab an alcohol wipe we have a VSC3 1 gigahertz oh, heat sink fan required so it's a 133 megahertz system bus, and it's uh, 1.4 volts, which is pretty low. And that's where uh, why Via even really existed in the x86 market is because they made low power chips for the embedded market usually. But yeah, it's a you know an okay little board. I mean, you've got Intel Ethernet controllers, and <laughs> this is actually space for like a boot ROM which is almost unheard of these days. And you actually do get stuff like you've got your parallel port and your serial port. They're all the micro connectors and you've got a floppy drive connector. 
and parallel parallel ATA, which in this case had one of these disk modules, 64 meg, not gig, meg. They need a 12 volt power supply. So yeah, these are just they just fit in the socket, and they're, they just show up as an ATA hard drive. And yeah, not too interesting. You can see where they had the option of a different Ethernet controller, but they went with the Intel ones. These are probably uh, real tech, and they just went with the Intel. Yeah, PCI slot, not an amazing board. You could theoretically add a VGA connector and a serial port to it if you wanted to, because it looks like all the hardware is there. It's just not actually being used. So you could, um, or the the circuits are there. It's just that the actual hardware connection isn't there. So you could just solder in. A connector if you want to use this in an actual regular case but yeah not really worth it not a very interesting board this is just the south and north bridge chip there isn't any custom stuff on this in this device I mean you're just it's just a standard motherboard and it, you're again you're just paying for their software to do the load balancing it's really nothing special compared to you know building anything but they charge an absurd amount of money. Oh, and I should also point out that there's a little two-pin connector here, which goes to the power switch, which is really odd. They're almost never right in the center of the case it's just, or the motherboard. That's just weird. Then you've got a wire running into it. Kind of a boring device, you know, 15 bucks, whatever. It was interesting to see it finally. I can finally uh, stop getting emails about the oh, this yellow rack mount things available. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. I was curious for a long time. And uh, even even the heat sinks are really crappy thin aluminum one.